I wanted to take some time to talk to you guys about how I go about hobble breaking my horses. And I know I've made a couple videos about this before, but now that I can upload a 10 minute video, I thought it'd be a good opportunity to go over all the steps that I make. Hobble breaking has a pretty bad rap among the horse industry because there's so many videos of people throwing on a set of hobbles on the horse and expecting them to figure it out. There's two reasons why I don't like to do that. It's because for one, you're not setting your horse up for success. And two, when you do that, you teach your horse to travel in them hobbles immediately. Because generally when you throw a set of hobbles on a horse, they go to fighting it and they end up running around the round pen for 20 minutes until they figure out their legs are restricted and it's easier to stand still. I'm a firm believer, as I said, when it comes to setting your horses up for success. Just like you do groundwork before you get on your horse for the first ride to set them up and prepare them for that first ride so it's as uneventful as possible, do the same thing when you go about hobble breaking your horses. So there's a couple steps that I make before I ever put a set of hobbles on my horses and go about training them to do it. As first, I always like to teach my horse to lead by a front foot. And Reba's been through this a time or two making videos and she knows what she's doing. So I am just using the rope off of my saddle. For these steps, I do like to use for the first time, I like to use a long cotton lead rope, something that if they do get to fighting and stuff like that, that it's not going to rub off the hair and cause sores on your horses. But since Reba's an old experienced horse and has done this a time or two, I can just use the rope off of my saddle to make this uh, demonstration for you guys. So the first thing I like to do with my horses, which generally a lot of people talk about, is teaching them to lead by that front foot. Getting them to understand that they need to come to the pressure when you ask them to lead without picking up that lead rope, just getting them to lead by that front foot. And I do that with both front feet. And some people will even do it by the hind feet. I don't necessarily go that far because I don't ever hobble the, my horses on the hind feet because if you correctly hobble break your horse to where they're gonna give to the pressure correctly, you're never gonna have to run a sideline so that horse doesn't travel. They're gonna learn right away that they need to stop and give to that pressure and they don't learn to travel. So generally what I do, first step, teaching that horse to lead by their front foot. So they're walking out really nice. And it's going to take some time and it's going to take some doing. You're going to have to hold that foot out like this. Hold it and hold it and hold it. Sometimes I'll encourage them to move forward. Just like that when they put their foot down and walk forward, release the pressure. And that's what you're going to have to do with a lot of horses when you're first starting out until they get to the point where they understand to lead by that front foot pretty easy. Now this next step that I do isn't very common. I've actually had a lot of people comment and ask, hey, can you show me how to do that? I've never heard of that before. This is something I was never taught by anybody. I just figured it'd be a good step to add in. And when you combine these steps, the first time you put hobbles on your horse, there's not going to be any reaction. It might kind of pick up their feet, but as soon as they feel that restriction in their feet, they're going to stand still. They're not going to run and jump around and crash or fall or anything when you combine these steps after you set your horse up for success. Next thing I like to do is I like to get my horse to lunge and start at the walk. Get them walking around, picking up that slack and getting them to where they stop. Now this might take some doing. They might kind of hobble around and stuff like that and kind of fight a little bit but if you get your horse efficient enough by leading by the front foot they're going to understand when you pick up that slack they're going to need to stop and they're going to need to pay attention and face up if you get your horse to where they're proficient at the walk and you pick up that slack they stop pay attention and that's what they do this is my next step once they start getting proficient at the walk, come on, Reba. Ask them to trot. Same thing. Pick up that slack. And you don't need to jerk the foot out from under them, make them trip and fall on their face to let them understand. Just hold that pressure in that foot. 
and they'll move it around and still be able to step on it, but it's going to be a little more difficult. They're going to feel that pressure, and they might kind of fight it, and they might kind of do this and kind of hobble and stuff like that. Just keep that line tight until they stop and relax, and then you release that pressure. As soon as they, you know, fighting along, fighting along, stop, release the pressure. And I'll do this at all three gates. Now I don't have a round pen to show you guys the lope, and I don't have enough lead to show you guys the lope either. Just like that, getting them to stop when you pull that pressure up. And I'm not, you can see, I'm not jerking her foot out from under her. I'm just putting pressure on that foot, and she stopped. Like I said, Reba's an old broke horse. She knows what she's doing. She's done this a time or two at clinics, showing people how to hobble bridge your horse done it for a few videos virtual sessions to show people how to do it and everything like that but just get them to where they can move out freely at the trot put a little bit of pressure on and they stop just like that and like i said they might hobble around they might fight a little bit if they continue to trot keep that pressure on that foot there she kind of tripped and that's okay that was my fault i picked up at the wrong time she landed on her toe tripped but I did not jerk the leg out from under her. I can't grip these coils. I got small hands and I can't pull a lot of pressure out of there. I can't put an excessive amount of pressure to do that because I'm small and I'm pretty weak. But this right here is a good step for your horses to understand that they need to stop and give to that pressure. And this comes in handy too when you're riding down the trail even if uh, you never intend on hobble breaking your horses, doing these, or ever using hobble, doing these steps and getting your horse to understand to give to that pressure is going to come in really handy when you're riding down the trail. You're trotting down the trail, you know, having a good old time, chatting with your friends and stuff like that. Boom, barbed wire, your horse is tangled up. Your horse isn't going to freak out and run off and tear themselves up with barbed wire. They're going to stop, let you know, hey, Something's going on with my feet, and it's wrapped around my feet. And I tend to do this with all four legs. This is the step that I will do with the back feet. Get them to understand that when that pressure is applied to their feet, if it's tangled up and it's restricted, that they need to stop. Just like that. And I only do that after I teach my horse to lead by their front feet, just like this. You want to get them to where they're leading really nice by their front feet, they're following you really good. And then you move on to the lunging step. We ask them to do it at the walk first and they're giving it at the walk really nice. Do it at the trot, stopping at the trot really nice. And this comes in really handy. Like I said, even if you never intend to use hobbles on your horse, it comes in really handy and could save your horse's life an expensive vet bill. Even if they're out in the pasture grazing and stuff like that, get caught up in the fence, they're just going to stop and wait for you. They're not going to panic. They're not going to cut themselves up. They're just going to stop and wait until you get there, pull them out. They understand how to give to that pressure on their feet. That their feet are restricted and they don't need to panic. And then after, if you do intend on putting hobbles on your horse, after you combine these steps, teaching them to lead by the front foot, teaching them to lunge and stop when that pressure is applied on all four feet. First time you put a set of hobbles on your horse, it's going to be extremely uneventful. That horse is going to know how to be hobbled before you ever put that hobble on them. And this is a good way too, that when you teach them to give to that pressure, you pick up their feet and you give to it. They're not going to freak out for one in the hobbles, but two, it comes in handy later on too. If you, if you got a horse that's really hard with their feet and tends to dance around and stuff like that when you're working on their feet. Helps a lot with that too. It has a variety of different advantages when you use it and it has brought my horses along in so many different ways. When I started integrating these steps together, first time I put the hobbles on, these horses just kind of, oh okay. Just like I said, you're setting your horse up for success before you ever even put the hobbles on. And by the time you put those hobbles on, that horse is going to be hobble broke. 